Look at her, flashing some ice, as the kids say, wearing jewelry worth more than most people's cars. Look at this. Though I'm not a fan of neoclassical architecture, it's one heck of a building to call home, wouldn't you say? Now, look at them. Surely you've seen them on the telly, in the tabloids, and perhaps in your history books as well. They look posh and wealthy, but in reality, their fortune is more than most of us can even imagine. Over $88 billion, and that's just their concrete assets combined combined with the value of their brand. Though it can be easy to assume where the royal family's money comes from, considering the British Empire has at one point in history invaded all but 22 countries, the truth of how their fortune is earned and distributed now is a bit more complex than most people know. Today, we're going to take a look at exactly where the royal family gets their wealth, what they spend it on, and how much they're worth individually. But firstly, we've got to talk about salary. The way the royal family is paid has shifted several times over the course of their reign and is frequently debated to this very day. Hold on to your couch and maybe pour yourself a cup of tea because there are a lot of steps and rather oddly named things we've got to cover. For starters, the government financially supports the monarchy by means of a sovereign grant. The sovereign grant is 15% of the annual profits of the crown estate. The crown estate is land, historical sites, and and royal residences that neither belong to the monarchy nor the public. It's almost like the limbo of ownership. The Crown Estate includes 24,700 acres of forestry, 66,500 acres of common land, 263,000 acres of farmland, 285,000 acres of mining land and quarries, Windsor Estate, Buckingham Palace, and, on a weirder note, several shopping centers and all the native mussels and oysters that are farmed in Scotland. The Crown Estate has an annual revenue that hovers around $2 billion. Of that, the Sovereign receives 15%, or, well, they used to. Recently, that amount was bumped up to 25% to help pay for renovations of Buckingham Palace. It is expected to drop back down to 15% in 2027 when the renovations are completed. Then there's the Duchy of Lancaster. Though it sounds like a space rock band, it's actually the private estate state of the monarchy. The property and assets within the Duchy of Lancaster are held in a perpetual trust, which is kept for generations of royals down the line. However, some of the revenue is presented to the monarchy every year in an amount called the Privy Purse, which is by all accounts a pretty uncomfortable name, especially when you consider what a privy is to some. But what you get in the Privy Purse is much, much better than anything you'd find in a privy. In 2018, the amount of money the family received was $20.8 million out of the Duchy of Lancaster's income of $533 million. But the Duchy of Lancaster isn't the only duchy on the scene. There's also the Duchy of Cornwall, which is a crown entity that holds assets to provide an income for the oldest son of the Queen. In 2011 to 2012, the Duchy of Cornwall was valued at $728 million, and the annual profit of just over $18 million was paid to Prince Prince Charles. Prince Charles uses the money partially for charity work, but he also uses it to pay the Duke and Duchess of Sussex and the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, or as most Americans know them, Meghan and Prince Harry and Prince William and Kate. One other important thing to note is that the duchies are not taxed. So that's what the monarchy earns annually from the government, but there are ways they earn even more, and Queen Elizabeth is a prime example of that. Queen Elizabeth's wealth can't be proved verifiable. However, several financial experts and historians have put her fortune around the $500 million mark. I mean, you should expect it to be pretty high after all. She sports Cartier crowns for fun, has a hat to match every outfit, and races and bets on thoroughbreds just to pass the time. And by races, I mean owns. Though it is rather amusing to picture Queen Elizabeth as a jockey. The Queen has quite a few assets of her own, many of which have been passed down for generations, though they are privately owned. One of the most unique assets is her stamp collection that is valued at over $100 million. The collection was started way back in 1864 and passed down to her at a very young age, where she began collecting them avidly. The fact that her book of stamps is worth 100 times what the average person makes in their lifetime is a bit surprising. And then there are the homes. While she spends most of her time at Buckingham Palace, there are two mansions that are 
privately owned by the Queen herself. First, there's Sandringham House, a country retreat the Queen is known to spend two months a year at, set on over 60 acres of formal gardens, including sweeping lawns, lakes, glades, and water gardens. The Sandringham House has long been an escape for the royal family, because sometimes you just have to get out the castle. The estate has gone through several changes over the years, and currently boasts a Jacobian-style main home. It's constructed of red brick and limestone, with a tiled roof and nine clusters of chimney stacks. The interior of the massive home has dozens of lavish rooms. The drawing room features intricately carved molding, a large stone fireplace, and ornate rugs and furnishings that have been passed down for generations. For a more relaxing evening, the Queen can retire to the saloon, which boasts stunning wooden arches, a fireplace, a chandelier, a place to play the piano, and even a small dining table. This is where the royal family enjoys their afternoon tea every Christmas evening. The saloon also has a weighing machine, which was installed by Edward VII, who would weigh guests upon their arrival and exit to show they'd been well fed. I'm not sure how well that would go over these days. There are very few photos of the interior of the building for the privacy of the royal family, but it is known what can be found inside. There's a formal dining room with bright green walls, a large ballroom, a gun and hunting room, a library, a billiards room, and even a bowling alley. Though I'm pretty sure the Queen doesn't have to rent shoes to play. The corridors of the home are lined with Indian armor, which Edward VII gathered on his trip to India and Asia in 1875. On the grounds, there are dozens of buildings, including a private church. There's also Anne Hall, which is a Georgian home used by the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. Further down, you'll find Park House, which was the original birthplace of Princess Diana, though it is now being used as a hotel. There's also Wood Farm, which is currently used as the residence of Prince Philip. Up where the locks are chilly and the Highland cattle are abundant, there is another privately owned home by the Queen, Balmoral Castle, which is, as the name implies, a castle. Located in Scotland, the property has been a private asset of the royal family since 1852. It's built from granite in a Scottish baronial style, which adds quite a royal touch to the estate. Set on over 50,000 acres, the property is a working estate with forestry, ponies, and highland cattle. The land is lush with mountains, valleys, rivers, and lakes. Nestled against the largest lake, there is a boathouse and hunting lodge, perfect for days when the family really wants to get away. There are 150 different buildings on the estate, including multiple holiday cottages and a malt whiskey distillery. There are 50 full-time employees and more than 50 part-time workers who work there to maintain everything. The ballroom is the only room that the public is permitted to physically see in the castle, though there are many photos that depict the wild interior of the home. Some rooms have a gothic flair with a bit of a maximalist design. Chandeliers and, um, well, pointy things are all the rage in several of the rooms, as is clashing patterns as well. The Queen's study is noted for having plaid tartan carpet, something I can confidently say I have never seen anywhere else. So, there you have it, the insane wealth of the royal family of England. What do you guys think about the royal family? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, Video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Oh, and turn on post notifications. As always, I'm Mr. Luxury. Pip pip, the doodly do.